I'd like to introduce myself first. Uh, it's actually the first time I speak on Istio Day here in North America. So uh, I work at Solo. I am one of the founding members in the Istio community, made a lot of contribution to the Istio project, and I wrote two books about Istio. Uh, I'm also one of the CNCF ambassador. A fun fact about me is I actually own 207 patents uh, while I was worked at IBM. With that, I would like to pass the mic to uh, each of our panelists. Uh, Eric, can you lead the way? Uh, good afternoon. My name is Eric Van Arman. Um, I don't know how long I've been on the TOC now. Uh, maybe. Two years. two years. I was going to say two years. Um, I work for IBM, um, and I'm on the TOC, and I'm also uh, the work group lead for the test and release work group, um, as well as a doc maintainer. Uh, John, can you go next? Hey, everyone. I'm John Howard. I'm a software engineer at Google. I've been working at Eastio for about five years now. Go uh, ahead, Mitch. Mitch. Hey everybody, I'm Mitch Connors. I'm that black sort of square up there because I didn't do what Lynn asked me to do. Sorry, Lynn. I just remembered you asked me to put a photo there. Well, uh, your face is good. here live. That's yeah, the most yeah. important thing. Uh, I'm a senior principal software engineer at Aviatrix where I lead container networking. And I've been on the Istio project also for about five years, TOC. And this year I get to serve as a CNCF ambassador, which is a lot of fun. Yeah, awesome. Last but not the least, Neeraj. Uh, hey everyone. Is the mic on? Yeah, I yeah. think so. Uh, I'm Neeraj Poddar. I'm VP of Engineering at Solo. Uh, prior to Solo, uh, I'd co-founded my company called Aspen Mesh. Uh, I've been a long time in the collaborative community, working with STO, leading the community. Currently part of the TOC was former uh, steering. He wrote a book on STO, which didn't sell as well as uh, Christian Postas and Linz did, but still wrote a book. Uh, apart from that, folks, you guys can all come forward, right? It will be good to see the faces, at least when you ask me questions, right? So come on in. Yeah, that's a good point. If you guys want to ask a question, uh, actually, yeah, there's a <laughs> mic there. Uh, so uh, if you guys want to ask a question, just get on the mic, uh, ask a question, because uh, that way we do have virtual recording, so they'll be able to hear your question. Uh, before any question comes in, uh, do we have anybody lines up for questions? Uh, I can ask some seating questions. Um, so I guess the first question I have would be, you guys learned about Ambient, right? John talked about how we are designing Ambient for a very, very large scale this morning. Uh, why would someone want a side color service mesh? Uh, so uh, anyone wants to take that? Lynn, Lynn, I think you're asking the wrong question there. Uh, I think the question is, why would anyone want a sidecar-based service mesh? Uh, <laughs> Right, when you, when you put your app out on Kubernetes and you're designing your deployment or your stateful set, how many of you stick your application in a sidecar? Anybody? Anybody? No. Oh, oh there's one guy. I'm sorry for your loss. Uh, it, it completely defies the way that Kubernetes is meant to work. It was an awesome magic trick for getting service mesh bootstrapped and off the ground. And now that we have a better idea of what we're doing, uh, I think we have much more efficient and effective ways to operate a service mesh. Any other TOC member wants to add anything? <clears throat> yeah, I mean, Mitch gave a very valid technical answer. Let me give a business reasons, right? So I just spoke to a bunch of customers and they were asking the same thing. Why would you run Ambient? And the answer is threefold, right? One, operational simpl uh, simplification. Uh, as we spoke with customers, with users of Istio, we found out that running Istio in production with Sidecar ain't easy, right? I just met with three of them who told me the story that how they started running with Istio two years ago, didn't go to prod, and now they're coming back because of Ambient, right? So there's a lot of operational complexity running Istio with Sidecars in production. It's coupled with how do you onboard your applications to the mesh, right? You have to restart your applications. Upgrading requires restart. So there's a lot of inertia there on adoption. Uh, second is the operational uh, cost. So since the sidecars are running in the form factor next to your applications and every pod, there's a lot of memory consumption. There's a lot of CPU being spent. In fact, 
I spoke with a large customer just yesterday, and they said 30% of their money was spent on sidecars. That's unacceptable, right? Like, you can't go to your director or VP and say, let me buy a new product which is going to cost you 40% more <laughs> of running it. And the last thing that we have seen is there are also some performance benefits you can get of running in the sidecarless mode, particularly when you just want layer 4, MTLS, and encryption. So these are the three pillars I say from a business point of view why you should focus on running sidecarless or ambient architecture. Yeah, I think that's really well said. Anyone wants to add anything? I think all the points are pretty much hidden. Um, you guys are really shy. Any questions from the audience? All right. Uh, okay. Uh, if you do have questions, uh, don't be shy. Stand in the middle. Uh, there's a mic there. I can also pass the mic around, but it might be easy if you just stand there and Lin ask only questions. has so many questions prepared. And they get a lot worse as they go to the end. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I mean, it's going to be a very short AMA. <laughs> So that, you know, we can spare the rest of the people from, yeah, but anyways, uh, so, like, my journey is sort of from the last year, I think, last year uh, in the KubeCon, I, I saw you, um, we were talking about ambient mesh, kind of like, you know, getting traction and stuff, um, kind of pretty new. So I, I think uh, it's been in one year, kind of, we are still playing around with Istio and, and, uh, and Envoy and watching videos in the YouTube and all of you guys and seeing the same product. So uh, I think there's... One, like it's most of, most of a, like, you know, comments is like, for the multi-cluster setup, uh, it seems to be still very clunky. And, and um, in sort of the, it, it requires a lot of, uh, you know, boilerplate stuff. And most importantly, though the documentation is sort of like, you know, clears out, you know, when you, so there are like various things that you could, the various topologies you could essentially use, right? So it does not quite clearly say that where exactly you're losing stuff. Uh, for instance, I just really have to go through and dig a little bit deeper to understand that what is really the bottleneck when we are really talking about, you know, when you know, we have cluster across multiple availability zones and kind of having one single, maybe an endpoint to the end users without worrying really. So what are you guys thinking about the multi-cluster side? What are the new things? I know ambient mesh is like the new traction. But what about this, these, these things um, uh, existing um, that you're coming up if you guys want to describe something? Anyone wants to start? Um, I, I can start. So um, basically, in the traditional sidecar world, there is a very uh, challenging problem, right? With multi-cluster, with all the endpoints available to each of the other cluster. I think uh, John touched a little bit early on today how we are looking at design ambient for better scale. Uh, for instance, with that waypoint proxy, you are not aware of every everything going on within the entire mesh, you are actually focusing on what are your potentially destinations and then only focus on those endpoints. That uh, would actually really help as you're thinking about beyond more than one cluster, right? Because your waypoint could be your central uh, destination focal, regardless whether your destination on one or multiple cluster. So instead of having that side Car, which you used to have, have visibility of everything running in the mesh across multiple clusters. Uh, the way we are having designed the waypoint, I think it's going to really help in that scenario. Is it still working? Yeah. Yeah, it's so, working. So, uh, yeah, the, the waypoint, that endpoint, could still stay across the different Kubernetes cluster? Uh, right it, now, it right, it's or? only one cluster, but we yeah. have some thoughts on designing Waypoint uh, to be able to cross multiple clusters. Uh, yeah. Yeah, we, we need to get single cluster up to beta uh, before we start talking about multi-cluster for ambient. That's going to be step one. But I do think that, that maybe the questions you're asking need a solution outside the Istio project. It's important for a project like Istio as it grows to know what it is and what it isn't. Uh, looking back on our history, we came out as a way to manage multiple Envoy proxies because Envoy was amazing, but no one in the world needs one. 
Uh, everyone needs a fleet of Envoy proxies to really achieve most of the benefits they want to get from that technology, and that's what Istio does. It operates a fleet of Envoy proxies. In multi-cluster, what you're beginning to need is something to operate a fleet, fleet of Istios. Yeah. A fleet of Istio control planes across tens or dozens or hundreds of clusters. Uh, there are projects out there that are starting to try to do that for you. I think Admiral is one that, to have a look at. Uh, but I wouldn't expect to see a solution to that problem from within the Istio project. We're not experts on it. Uh, and you should find someone who is to help you solve it. Yeah, I mean, that's a very good point. I was going to mention the same thing around Istio is a toolbox, right? So we should provide the tools so that you can get multi-cluster set up for communication. But once you have a multi-cluster environment, there's a lot more to it. You need a single pane of glass for visibility, probably, right? You need to have a right conduit for telemetry. You need to have a management solution so at scale, if you have hundreds of clusters, you can install and upgrade it to your uniformly, right? So Mitch is absolutely correct in that we should provide the tools, but we should leave space for other projects if you are interested, right? to contribute and bring ideas in the ecosystem, or even vendors to participate there, right? This is where our community will grow further. Given that, I would say there are gaps in the current documentation that we should not elide, and we should definitely fix them. But even with ambient multi-cluster landing, I would say a complete solution that a customer or a user can take to production, I, I think it will be rather dangerous to just bake it out of the open source Istio yourself. You should look for some other projects or help elsewhere. Um, one more question. Um, if you don't mind. Uh, yeah, so. so Actually, for... we have a couple of people okay, behind sure. you. Let me do a time check. Uh, we may have to come back to you. Because uh, I think our session is only 25 minutes. Thank you so much for that question. Yes. <laughs> Go ahead. Uh, yeah, no worries. Um, I'll be quick. Uh, I'm very excited about uh, Ambient. I actually used it off the experimental branch quite a while ago. Um, I'm super excited about the progress you guys made over the last year. We're in alpha now. Um, I'm very interested in understanding what is the path to beta, what is currently missing, and obviously when can we actually use it in production. Uh, my company is very much interested in the cost savings. Oh, uh, yeah, I can probably take yeah. that. Okay. Yeah, I, I would say, you know, we've been talking about Ambient for, I don't know how long. May, at least oh, wow. last coupon, we were talking about it. So it's been quite a while. You may wonder, what's taking so long, right? I think if we were building Ambient from scratch as a startup new project, we would have called it 1.0, GA, go run it in prod, and then have a bunch of outages, right? right. But with Istio, it's like this existing enterprise software deployed by many people here, thousands of highly regulated environments, et cetera. So the bar is, I'd say, very high. Um, so it's not necessarily that Ambient's like this, you know, terrible thing that's taking forever to get to beta. It's just the bar for beta quality at Istio's maturity is extremely high. Um, so what we've been working on is largely about reliability. Um, so making sure that there's no period of time where, ah, oh, you lose traffic for a couple seconds, or the security policies don't work for, you know, when the pod's starting up. That may be perfectly fine for a demo, but it's not acceptable in a banking environment or something, right? right. So there's a large list of things like that, and then there's all the integration. So things like multi-cluster, multi-network, expanding to VMs. Um, CNI. Yeah. Yep, yeah. CNI, all these like CA integrations that we talked about. So there's all these areas because these two is such an established project that we want to make sure the integrations are seamless uh, and, and all that, that sort of thing. Probably missing a lot of other stuff. We do have a, a document that's kind of, I think it's called the Ambient Path Debater or something that kind of lists out these things. And we're starting to track that. Um, so I would encourage you to check that out. Um, yeah. Lynn, can I ask him two questions? Yeah, please. <laughs> Sorry, I'm going to put you on the spot. First, yeah. are you an existing Istio user with sidecars and you want to yes. migrate to Ambient? Yes, that's correct. Fantastic. And secondly, will you be a beta tester once we release it? I, I would love to. Uh, I right. actually work for Snowflake. Uh, we have a pretty sizable department. There you go. Yeah. That's, <laughs> fine. that's really good to know because we're looking for a few. So thank you. Uh, yeah, I would say one of, well, you're probably, Mitch was probably going to say the same thing. But one of the, the best things that you guys can do to help out is to try out Ambient where it is now and give us feedback. Or even if you don't have time to try it out, but you have some additional information. One of the hardest things about running an open source project is getting user feedback from people. Right? A lot of people use it in production. We have no idea. And they have all these issues that they work around and do all these crazy things to fix. And they never even open an issue or anything like that. So the number one thing you can do is try it out and tell us. 
Uh, we have a user we survey going around. Yes, uh, we, can we probably, do have a user survey. It's probably at the end. We'll have a QR code. If you haven't taken that, please take it. Find us in the hallways, chat, open up GitHub issues, whatever you need to do. But feedback is, is the best thing. Yeah, to, to, just to add to that, because we talk about it a lot within the community is, you know, it's a chicken and an egg problem, right? We, we try to get something out. We look for feedback so we can make it better because, you know, we, we don't want to make changes in the APIs and stuff once you get to beta, right? So if, if we can't get the feedback and, and get the, the thing right to begin with, it's hard for us to say, hey, it's beta, you know, please try it. So we're, you know, we're looking for feedback even with the alpha that it's at, so. Sounds good, dude. <laughs> yeah, once it's beta, it's too late for feedback yeah. uh, for the most part. Bug fixes, yes. Uh, the API is the wrong shape. Sorry, we needed that feedback last year. So uh, uh, get your feedback in while you can. Thank you. Yeah, thanks Thank you. for that great question. Uh, hi. I think my question is going to be asked uh, in the end of the day still. So I've been uh, working with the Istio for the last five years, and I've been a great opponent of it, discouraging teams from integrating Istio with sidecars for, <laughs> for any project I've met in my life, <laughs> and for obvious reasons, of course. And now with this uh, uh, burst of uh, Cilium popularity, and uh, much overlap between Istio and new features implementing in Cilium, do you still that uh, implementing the new data path as embed mesh is uh, like still viable thing in the long run? Because I actually do like Cilium uh, Istio APIs. They're agile, they're robust, and this is something Cilium as a project lacks the ability to uh, uh, robustly uh, configure envoys that they still utilize. Don't you think that uh, one possible path forward is like adopting Istio as a control plane for data path provided by Cilium project as one of the options. So we're constantly looking at integration with the Cilium project, right? So the sidecar of Istio integrates really, really well with Cilium. When you use Cilium as a CNI, so you can have yeah. Cilium network policy enforced along with your sidecar function perfect fine, right? For Ambient, we're looking at doing the same thing, right? So we do expect your network policy continue to be enforced by Cilium, but as any of security, uh, I was saying, we do expect you pick the right tools for your job, right? Like Istio is designed to do mutual TLS, secure your application communication within the mesh. I, and if you're looking for FIPS compliance, you know, Istio is right designed for that, along with layer seven processing, WASM integration, you know, traffic shifting, canary base. So that I do expect uh, Istio will continue to be shine there, especially with Ambient to have the right architecture in the first place uh, with the two layer uh, slicing the layer approach. Um, so we do expect that we continue to work with Cilium, but on mostly on the CNI layer. Yeah, I, I'll just say one thing. You said you've been working with this team for five years. Yeah. Thank you. You're a warrior. I think you have lots of burns, right? Yeah, we, I've been actually running it as uh, Ingress Gateway at scale for millions of RPS for oh. years. Fantastic. Yeah, just uh, just never so using much. sidecars for anything. Right? So, so we want to be able to interview you in that case. If, yeah. if those of you yes. who have been... <laughs> see, that's what... But we'll I'll, I'll add one thing on Cilium, though, right? Uh, see, for an open source project like Istio, which has already been run in production for large-scale environments, it's important to understand what we can be good at, what can we securely and reliably do, instead of ever expanding our scope, right? So that's why uh, what Lynn said, we want to integrate with as a CNI layer. Now, uh, there is marketing fluff saying sometimes how a uh, particular service mesh based on eBPF can solve all your problems. That's not really true, right? It has to have strong technological foundational stuff to say that you're doing mutual TLS, right? I feel very strongly that Envoy as a layer seven and layer four proxy is the right choice. And that's what Envoy will always, oh, that's what Istio will always configure. I think for CNI, if you're using eBPF, you should continue to use that. You should continue to use uh, Cilium. I really don't see uh, Istio configuring uh, Cilium data path uh, helping in a way because the set of functionality there is not 
it's just not there for what we want to use. It actually is, because uh, the Cilium agent itself incorporates Envoy binary inside, so the e EPPF hook only exactly. redirects the, the traffic. But then so that's a layer 7 proxy, which is deployed in a multi-tenant way, which inherently is unsafe. That's the problem. Yeah, it's a per node uh, Armway proxy, yeah, it's per which node, but, there is a, but there is an ongoing proposal to split the threading models for listeners so that each uh, listener can uh, implement that's them. That's a big, big refactor of uh, a very stable proxy that is running in production for the last six years. I first saw the proposal in uh, Envoy Con, I think 2019. Exactly. So. Don't you think that this is a way forward? No, it's. I. Is it fair to call ago? it vaporware? I don't know that there's any. Well, like, I've it's spent a, yeah. last 10 years creating proxies. The number of mistakes you make creating stable proxies that people can use is the service area is huge. Envoy is there where people trust it. Changing the fundamental guts right now for a use case that has no legs, I don't think is the direction that the community should go. I, 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 I think we need to be, agree to, to disagree because Nginx, Nginx was uh, following the same model for years. Very until it became familiar. completely obsolete by Envoy, right? Uh, so I, I think we need to be careful that we don't turn this into a, a other project bashing Absolutely. session. Uh, yeah. Yeah. Uh, Sorry. Uh, there are some amazing service mesh technologies out there beside Istio, and you should approach them from, with a requirements perspective. Tomorrow, Liz Rice is going to be giving a talk from Isovalent on why sometimes you don't need MTLS. That's a little surprising to me. I feel like Generally, you need MTLS. Right. You should go to that talk and listen and yeah. bring uh, your security requirements in mind and pick whatever meets your requirements. I'm, I, I'm in complete agreement that you don't always need MTLS for any case. So, you yeah. should definitely chat because you are running it in production for the last five years. I want to understand your use cases better. Okay. Right? But thank you. One, yeah, thanks if I could add something, oh, I yeah. think I have a bit of a different perspective from, from some folks here. Um, you know, we, we talk a lot about how we split the, the proxy, and we have the Z-Tunnel layer and the Waypoint layer. And in my mind, the real service mesh functionality that we want is all about the Waypoint. I don't want to be in the business of operating a Z-Tunnel. I don't want to be doing this node networking stuff, right? The CNIs already do that. But what they don't do is give us the secure transport encryption and identity layer. If they did, I would happily use that, right? I really don't want to be in this business of there's no networking, right? It's not fun. The fun stuff is all the great functionality we can put in the Waypoint proxy. Wasm, rich telemetry, cool routing features, failover, reliability, all this stuff, right? I want the networking layer to be better, but it's not quite there yet. So we have to bridge the gap as part of Istio so that our users can have that secure end-to-end -end encryption. If eventually the rest of the ecosystem picks up and can provide that for us, I'd be happy to integrate personally. Yeah, I, I totally agree with you. Like yeah, if follow up on, scale of those functionalities, we should yeah, follow up on, 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 on your opinion. So I think the encryption might be optional because whenever it comes to encryption, there must be cost. So it, it could be like a optional to the customer. So for example, customer could trust the cloud infrastructure and they they trust, uh, they, they think it's fine, the, the, the data could be plant text on, on the wire, so yeah. Yeah, there's definitely some customers um, that, that don't require encryption, uh, a lot tend to, or at least will eventually require it, uh, if they don't today. Um, so it, it could certainly be viable to have a mode that, that doesn't require it, sure. Yeah. Okay, um, by the way, uh, Jingrong from Duke and Uber. So um, I got a couple, couple questions about ambient mesh. So first uh, is like, uh, um, when the tunnel will be production ready? ready? <laughs> uh, yeah, so we're first targeting beta, which is, I don't know what you'd call it, production ready if you're extremely brave. Uh, I wouldn't call it really production ready at that point. Um, so we're kind of heads down on that. And once we hit that, we'll start planning for GA. I, I think it's pretty plausible. We've been talking about uh, splitting up exactly what we promote to beta and GA and promoting Z tunnel, which is a much smaller component to beta and or GA earlier than the rest of all of Ambient, uh, which has a lot of other things that we need to work out with. Um, but that hasn't really been finalized, so it, it'd be hard to give you a, a concrete timeline there. Okay, sounds good. Um, the other question is like, uh, so for Ambient Mesh, so by design, I see there's a waypoint proxy, and this waypoint proxy is tied to a destination workload. So that means each destination workload has a, probably has only one waypoint proxy, and uh, what if this, in terms of reliability, what if this waypoint proxy fails, 
does that mean that my entire destination workload or service go, goes dark? Um, yeah, I can take that. Um, so it's not one to one. Uh, it's actually, I would say, any to any. So we offer today in the current version, because we want to keep it simple, you can either deploy a waypoint for the namespace or a service account. We could expand that to be a completely arbitrary set of workloads. You could say this, this app, this app, and this other app, and this other namespace, they all share one waypoint. Okay. And that waypoint can have one instance, two, 10, 100. It can scale up independently. Yeah. So based on your reliability and isolation constraints, you can pick and choose uh, your model, basically. Okay. Okay. So it's fairly flexible architecturally. And when, when we say you can scale it up, this is not like scaling up the sidecar, where you go edit some config map and reinstall your control plane and cross your fingers and restart your workloads, and eventually, maybe, you get the scaled up sidecar that you wanted. It's a deployment. If you want two of it, you go and say replicas two. I see, yeah. That, that sounds great to me. So but how about in current Z tunnel, I see for the waypoint proxy, that address, that field, there's only it's not an array, it's just a single value. Yeah, it's, a, it's an address of the service. So then we look up the service and the servants can have multiple instances see, behind I it. See, yep. That makes sense. So All right, we still have more people. So thank you so much for that. Thank for you these so questions. much. For this. Yeah, no problem. If anyone, by the way, doesn't uh, get their questions answered or uh, all of us, I'm sure will be at the Eastview uh, booth throughout the week. Yeah. Come by, chat. We love to hear from, from everyone. Let me start by saying Eastview is amazing. <laughs> Thanks. Yeah, Thank you. Thanks. <laughs> uh, we've been uh, mainly using Istio for the ingress gateway part, so we don't use sidecars as of yet, uh, waiting for ambient mesh. Uh, the question mainly I wanted to ask was, so we run into situations where we have Istio running on Kubernetes, which is running on bare metal hardware, uh, and there are situations where you want to make a major change in the hardware, um, Linux upgrade or something like that, and we want to just take out take the entire cluster offline. Uh, a nice way would be that if Istio, we can flip a switch and say, Istio, you know what, Take, don't forward any traffic to any of the services within the cluster, but when we are doing, let's say, running some smoke tests, let these services be alive. So do you have any suggestions of how that can be achieved, or is Istio not the right way to do it? When, when you talk about changes that bring down a cluster, uh, are you referring to configuration changes to say virtual services or policy, or are you talking about changes like upgrading your, your Istio installation or something else? Something beyond Istio. I'm upgrading okay. Cube, I'm upgrading Linux kernel, or I'm taking out cluster, upgrading hardware, something like that. Uh, yeah, so normally when you do cluster level upgrades or rotation, right, you need something in front of it to shift the traffic uh, relying on Istio can work if you want to have a cluster in front of this which is deployed with an Istio ingress gateway. Uh, otherwise, you're going to have a lot of problems with mirroring configuration, right? The better way is you have another cluster that is set up already which will have the same amount of services and then you can fail over in front of it. That's the recommended pattern, I would we, say. We do that. What I want to get to is uh, taking out the entire cluster, existing services, fine, but there when we run our smoke test, when we do go with that approach where whatever load balancer or whatever we have, we just switch the entire cluster off, now we can't even test our normal test cases. That's why I was asking, I, we looked into uh, in services you have fault injections, Yes. but that's, that's a service level, not at a cluster level, so that's what I was asking. Let's chat more. I mean, we have done stuff like based on headers, you can do some routing especially like dev token headers, maybe that will help you? Yeah, I'd imagine with the subsets, you can match on the cluster. Yeah. So normally we match on labels, but we inject a bunch of synthetic labels, and cluster is one of them. It, it's hard to know exactly what you need for your exact setup, but I'd imagine with some combination of that. Um, yeah, definitely worth following up. Uh, so what is the feature you mentioned? A destination rule subset. Okay. Yeah. Thanks. All right, I think we are over the time. Uh, if I'm reading correctly, Facilla, is that right? Or do we have yeah. time for one more question? Oh, we have five more minutes. Oh, we got five more minutes. Oh, thank you so much, Zach. Yeah, go ahead, I'm sorry. Thanks, can you hear me? Yes. Yep. I have one question regarding the protocol supported by Istio Mesh. Uh, we are trying to do some tests. Can with... you speak a little bit louder? Sorry? 
Can you speak a little bit ah, louder? Okay. Maybe to the microphone. Yeah. Okay. Okay. We are we are doing some tests some tests with uh, with, with Istio Mesh with the protocol Infinispan, and we want to know if that is supported in the Istio Mesh. Can, can you say the name of that protocol again? Infinispan. And is it a TCP-based protocol? No, but no, it's not based on. Okay. I, I still didn't get the name. I've, I've never heard of the name, so I'm going to guess that means we don't support it. Yeah, yeah more or less, <laughs> if it's not TCP-based, then we more or less don't support it. Okay. Um, another, well, in the, the same, uh, for example, Redis, uh, I, I know we support uh, in Istio, uh, but I, it's only the inbound or the outbound support. Yeah, so in general, I would say for protocol support, we do have just any TCP that works fine. HTTP is the number one thing we focus on. There is some small amount of support for things like Redis, MySQL, Mongo, maybe a few others, uh, but it's, I would say, a lot less mature than the HTTP. Um, yeah. Yes, primarily it's for telemetry. It's not for yes. advanced routing yeah. or security enforcement. Yes. Okay. Thank you. Professor. There is this project that I, I can't pronounce, but you can probably find it. Um, Iraqi? That, That's yeah, the one? yeah, Iraqi. Yeah. yeah. They do, uh, they, they kind of layer on top of Istio and add a bunch of different protocol support. You might want to check that out. Oh, yeah. And, and if your protocol is UDP based, you might look at uh, Cisco has a sandbox project called Media Streaming Mesh. It's sandbox, it's still not mature yet, but uh, they're looking at RTSP and other UDP based protocols in a mesh sort of architecture. Istio may get there eventually with Ambient, but it's going to be a little bit. Thank you. Okay. Thanks for asking. Yeah, thanks for that question. Also, a question, uh, question uh, so if you are interested in Lightning Protocol, you can look into our community. Okay. All right. Yeah, yep. thanks Thank for you. that mention. Thanks. <laughs> All right, I guess uh, it's time for us to wrap up. Thank you everyone so much and thank you for all the panelists. We will be around if you guys have more questions. I, uh, I wasn't uh, kidding about turning the tables on you. If you've been an Istio user for some time and want to talk, I would love to interview you and better get to understand what's going on and what you think about Ambient. Absolutely. Thanks everyone. <laughs>